movies use strong tones to indicate emotion or environment. In this video, I'll share a method of creating these strong tones. We'll build an easy to use node tool and I'll give it to you for free in the end of the video. Let's create a teal and orange toning, a split toning, muted toning and monochromatic toning. So let's learn advanced toning. I consider toning to be a separate part than the look in the color grading process. Let me show you. Here we have a clip in simple Rexon Online without any color grading on it. Then we add the look. This is a look modification transform from my ACES Light look library called Synodern. And then we add the toning, teal and orange, for example. And here are other toning variations. Split tone, warm muted tone, cool muted tone, warm monochromatic tone, or cool monochromatic tone. And pay attention that all of these have the same base look underneath the toning. This is how most movies are graded. Scenes have the same base look, but the toning is different from scene to scene. This is easy way to start using color in your storytelling as well. And you will learn all these toning techniques later on in this video. Next, I'll explain the idea behind toning. Then I'll show how to do it in practice in DaVinci Resolve. And in the description of the video, you can find the note that the note tree tool will build in this video for free. But before you go, uh, let me tell you about my ACES Lite look library product that I just used to create the look. Because this toning technique only works if you already have a good look underneath the toning and the look library is the best method for that. When we have our color management done as we did a second ago, we can apply look modification transforms to our footage. These are pre-made looks that give us a professional grade, often in just one click. I wanted to give people a shortcut on how to achieve the same quality looks as I'm able to create without spending a decade on learning how to color grade, as I did. You just drag and drop one of the looks from the library to your single path and the look is done. And there are over 11 looks to choose from, synthetic and real film emulation looks. And I'm adding more looks all the time that you'll get right away when they are ready. These are much more than regular LUTs or DCDLs. These add physically accurate halation, physically accurate diffusion, realistic grain, and these work with the textures in your footage in a way you simply can with a normal light. And everything in these looks is parametric. You can dive inside the look node and get access to all of the sub-elements, all made with native tools. You can easily adjust the size or strength of the halation effect, or turn off the diffusion nodes, change the type of film grain. You can add your own modifications or even mix and match looks together. And I have just added all the toning presets we are about to create in this video to the ACES Lite look library as well. So you don't need to try and copy paste my settings from this tutorial. The toning presets are ready in the library for you. When you get my ACES Lite look library, you get a clear and straight to the point tutorials on how to use these looks and you'll learn this workflow easily. The feedback has been overwhelmingly positive and I actually reply to questions about the product and reply to people when they need help with their grading. To learn more about my look library and support me making these video tutorials, check out the link in the description and in the end of the video. Now let's learn to use advanced tone. Here we have a video and a color diagram and the vector scope showing how our modifications affect the diagram. These dots are the tiles from the diagram above. First, let's talk about the basics of toning. To do toning, we first add a color cast to our image. For example, this cool tone, but the tone can be practically any color. You can see how the diagram's tiles move towards the cool sector in the vector scope. Then we decide how much color variety we want to in our clips. Uh, we, uh, do we want it monochromatic or do we want a lot of variety between colors? I call this pre-saturation as this applies before the color cast. 
pay attention how the color diagrams dots are shrinking towards the spot in the blue sector instead of the center of the vector scope. We could call this subjective saturation as well. And then we might want to add adjust the overall saturation as well. I call this post saturation as it's applied after the color cast. And here you can see how the dots shrink towards the uh, or shrink or expand away from the center of the vector scope. And this we could call objective saturation as well. So this is the basics, but toning is not at all this simple. To understand advanced toning, you need to understand subjective color space and color inertia. When we add a strong tone to our image, we first see the image as very cool and blue, but after a while we become partly blind to the coolness. All is basically just different shades of blue, but blue become, has become our new normal. This is an illusion I call the illusion of subjective color space. For example, this bluish gray color now looks like skin tone. Yes, a very cool skin tone, but skin tone still. This quite saturated blue looks like a neutral tone, and this highly saturated blue looks like a normal muted blue color. This is our new subjective, subjective color space. Objectively, everything is blue or close to blue, but our subjective experience shows that blue can be considered a neutral tone or even a skin tone. In order to create this illusion of a subjective color space, we need to consider that some colors have a special quality that I call color inertia. Let me explain. This is how the image looks if we ignore the color inertia. As you can see, it looks way too blue, and the illusion of a subjective color space is broken. Now everything is just blue. No neutrals or skin tones anywhere. We need to add inertia to some of the colors and tonal areas. This means that some of the colors and tonal areas are affected less than others. It's like some of the colors have inertia that resist the push towards the chosen color tone. First, the shadows should have a lot of inertia, so shadows are affected much less than the mid-tones or highlights. We partly recover the shadows. Then the neutrals should have a bit of inertia, so we'll recover the neutral tones a bit as well. Then skin tones and other warm tones should have inertia too. So we'll recover the skin tones and warm tones partly as well. The last part is the highest tones or the whites in the image, so we'll recover them as well. And by respecting the color inertia, we have the subjective color space illusion again. And the same concept applies to other color tones as well, not only to blue tones. So, how to do this in practice in DaVinci Resolve? You can download the node tree we'll use from the link in the description, but I'll create it from scratch in this video. Here we have some lock clips. I've already set up the color management and color corrected the clips. The IDT takes our clips to our working color space, ACCCT, but you can use DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate as well. The ODT takes our footage to our delivery color space, Rexon on 9A, and this CC node is our color correction node. To create a nice look, I'll add a look modification transform, transform from the AC Slide look library. This is Cinemodern, a good look to use for this toning example, but you can use other looks as well. For example, Vision 3 to 150D. But let's use the Cinemodern. And then we'll start building the toning nodes. First, let, let's add three nodes and make them into a compound node. And let's dive inside it. I'll name the first pre-saturation and the last post-saturation. Then in between, this is our color cast node. This is the basic toning setup, and I'll show you how to use it. Uh, let's start to create the iconic teal and orange look by pushing the overall tone to a cool teal color. It's best to use the gamma tool for this. And to add filmic density, I'll push the color cast down in the exposure as well. I'll reduce the pre-saturation a bit to narrow the color variability and adjust the post-saturation as well to control the overall saturation. Next, we'll add the color inertia elements. I'll add a layer node setup. This will overlay this node on top of the one above it. Yes, below is on top. Yeah, that's confusing. Anyway, then I'll connect the original image to the node because that's what we want to recover. 
So we're going to skip the pre-saturation. We want to recover the original image. So first shadows. I'll use the HSL qualifier to select the shadows with the masked view. White is selected, black is not. These are the values I consider to work well to recover the shadows. Then in the key tab, we select the amount we want to recover shadows. This value is fine for shadows. Then the neutrals. I'll add another layer and call this one neutrals. I select the neutrals in the HSL VAC qualifier. These values work well. Then for clean results, let's add a bit of denoise. And in the key tab, we set the amount of recovery to be rather low. This value is fine. The skin tones. Then we recover some of the skin tones and other warm tones. Let's select the skin tones based on the hue and add a lot of softness to these ramps. And let's limit the neutrals. Uh, this avoids nasty color blocking. And some denoise is in order as well. Then in the key tab, we select how much we blend the skin in. Values between 0 0.3 and 0 0.8 are good. I'll set mine to this. Then the last thing is the bright, uh, bright highlights or whites in the image. For this, I only want to neutralize the highlights and not affect the luminance. So I'll add another layer combiner after the post saturation and set the blend mode to color. So now this node doesn't affect the luminance of the whites, only the color. In the HSL qualifier, I select the highlights. Uh, now we have set up our easy to use inertia tool controls. And with this node tree, we can create so many different looks. This is our first look and we already created it as I explained how to, this Tony works. Uh, and now we can adjust the look in many ways. You can choose the hue and saturation of the color cast. You can change the pre-saturation or tweak the post-saturation. You can blend the skin tone more towards the cool tone or have them stand out more by changing the gain in the key tab. You can modify the skin tone selection here as well if needed. For example, you might want to include more of the neutral tones. So it's relatively easy to adjust this tone to make many different variations of it. And by the way, I have added this toning preset to my AC Slide look library for you for you for easy use. So you don't need to like copy paste all the settings from here. You can just uh, get it from the look library. Split toning is basically the same thing as any other toning other than the shadows are pushed to a different color than the highlights. For example, here we push the highlights to a warm tone and the shadows to a cool tone with the curves tool. To modify this look, you can edit the split toning colors or play around with the different inertia amounts with the corresponding node key tab. This preset is included with the AC Slide look library as well. With the muted tone look, the pre-saturation is low and the post-saturation is low too. The color cast is not as strong and the skin tones blend in as well. You can easily choose what color you want the muted colors to have by changing the color cast node to your liking. And this preset is included with the AC Slide look library as well. This is a very strong look as the subjective saturation is highly limited as the pre-saturation is at zero. The skin tone's inertia is relatively low, just giving a bit of life back to the skin tones. With the post-saturation post -saturation node, you can adjust the overall saturation. And with the color cast, you can choose the one color your footage falls to. The monochromatic tone preset is part of the AC Slide look library as well. Go and download the empty node tree template from the link here, so you can uh, create these tonings yourself as well. And I have added all the presets uh, we created in this video to my look library as well. So if you prefer an easy way to do this, click this link and get my look library product. Or maybe you might like this video as well. Subscribe and see you in the next one.